Welcome everybody to the MATLAB and Simulink Primary and Secondary School Competitions Hub. Uh, today we have Neha here with us. Hi Neha, how are you? Hi Jose, how are you? I'm good. Very good, uh, thanks. Neha is here to present to us uh, some information on uh, demos that she's been developing that are regarding the new VEX EDR B5 functionality, in this case the smart motors, right? Yes, so let's start with that. I'm presenting here today the VEX smart motors using Simulink and how I program few models with the latest VEX smart features. Excellent, let's dig into it. So let's start first with the demonstration of an arm control of the robot. So here you can see that I am operating the joystick. I am actually controlling the joystick and bringing the arm position to a specific position. Okay, and I can see that the arm is holding that position, right? Yes, yes, it's holding wherever I want it. And now let's see how I have done this. Okay. The agenda for the today's presentation will be, we'll be starting with some introduction of the VEX V5 smart motors. What are the new features in that? The software demonstrations for the arm and the robot motion, which includes all the modes, the control and the braking modes. And then we'll be wrapping up with a few key takeaways. Sounds good. So let's start with what is the new VEX EDR V5 smart motors. So initially in V4, what we used to do we used to connect a CPU with a controller, then a controller to the motor. They all are wired. And for the sensing, we connect the motor back to the encoder and then to the CPU. There are many wires connected to all the parts. But in V5, we have one V5 brain and we have one V5 smart motors. They are just connected bi-directionally with one wire. So the controller, the encoder, and the motor all are in the smart motors. And we are just operating the motors with the V5 brain. Okay, sounds good, Neha. And I think uh, when we were using the V4 systems, if we wanted to perform any type of closed loop control with the motors, not only do we need all this setup, but we also had to develop some logic in, in our programming to be able to implement the closed loop control, right? Is that the, the case in the V5 system as well? Yes, yeah, so in V5, the algorithms are inside that, and I'll be showing you how we can actually uh, have the different velocity and different positions and how we can actually change those algorithms with the Simulink block models. Okay, so the smart motors already have some pre-programmed algorithms that we can take advantage of. Yes, we don't have to do any new algorithms in that. Sounds good. So let's start with an ARM velocity control mode here. So in this video, you'll see that the arm goes up when I operate with the joystick, but it comes down on its own with the gravity. I'm not giving any command to come down. This is one type of behavior. And I'll, I'll tell you what are the different behaviors we can have. We can have the arm motion at a specific position and we can stop at a specific position. So we will be now seeing how okay. those can be possible. Okay, so in this particular case, the motor that's controlling the arm uh, is not basically not running any more current, and then it looks like it's just falling down, right? Yeah, it's just falling with the gravity thing. I'm yeah. not giving any command in that. Perfect. So let's see in the Simulink how I have actually programmed this thing. So this is a Simulink model here. So this is the arm velocity control mode. This is the joystick block, and this is the arm smart motor block. These blocks are available in the VEX V5 companion app in the library. And if you don't know, or you have not seen what is this, there's a link below, uh, which gives you the video of how you can install it and how you can use that. And these blocks are in that library. Perfect. We are actually connecting the joystick with the arm motor here. We go into the arm motor and there's a braking mode and there's a control mode. There are three braking modes, coast, brake, and hold. The video that I show you is of the coast braking mode. So we change the braking mode to coast, the control mode is velocity, and this is how we actually program that. We can deploy it with one click to this deploy to hardware, and you can deploy it to your VEX hardware. And basically right now we're just uh, coupling or connecting the joystick to the motor and that signal in between, does that have a particular number or range of numbers? Yeah, it's it goes from minus 127 to 127. Great. So here, now I will explain you what is the difference between these three braking modes. So this is a brake mode. So when we set the command to a brake braking mode, then the command stops at a position. And this is the coast mode. In the coast mode, when the command is not set, then also it's moving. And in the hold mode, it comes to a stop when the command is not set. And even if you are giving an external force, it will not shift from any other position. Okay, so it sounds like brake mode uh, will just stop whenever there's no more command. Yeah. 
coast might run a little bit longer than expected because there's no active action when the command is stopped and then hold is the one that's actually implementing some logic right internally to control even if it gets pushed back uh, yes perfect. so now i will be demonstrating the break and the hold on the same arm um, velocity control mode so in this video i've implemented the break breaking mode so it goes the arm stops at a position if it's coming back so that means it's due to the gravity it's there is no command set there but it stops okay. at a position so we can see that it's it's falling down still but it's falling down a lot slower than than the regular coast yeah breaking mode right yeah just because there's no command okay. so now we will see in simulink how we have done that thing so this is the same model that we actually used for the coast one the same joystick the motor the only change is the braking mode so we changed the brake mode to brake and the control mode is velocity here. And this is the same. We can actually implement the brake mode here with the arm. Okay, so now we see the hold braking mode. So as you can see, my joystick is telling at which position the arm should come and stop. So I'm changing the positions with my joystick and it's stopping at that position. Okay. So let's see in Simulink model hub. This is the same model we used for the coast and the brake. So the joystick connected to the arm motor and we open the block and we just uh, change the braking mode to hold and the control mode is velocity here only. And now we can actually implement the whole braking mode in the arm. Okay, so it sounds like um, all of these three functionality that you showed us, it's the same block, but the only thing that uh, we have to do to change it is to go inside and change that braking yes. mode parameter, right? Yeah. Okay. Now next, I will be demonstrating more on the position control mode. Initially, all the three were for the velocity control mode and now it's for the position control mode. So in this video, we will see that when I press this the button the arm goes to a specific position given that is 900 ticks and when i press down button it comes back to the zero position that it was okay so you're using two buttons uh, and each button gives it a specific position that the yes. arm has to go to right and same logic okay. i implemented in the simulink model this is a simulink model for the position control mode with the whole braking mode so we have the two buttons here button one, button two, and we have a straight four model for the position and we have an arm motor block. Okay, and a couple of things that I've noticed in this model, Neha, is that the, the, the smart motor block that we seen before now has two inputs, right, yes. instead of one. So let's see why it is. We go into the smart arm motor block and we are changing the control mode to position control mode. When we change the control mode to position control modes, we have two inputs, the velocity and the position. Now we have to input two things. What will be the velocity with which the arm should move and what should be the position at which the arm should go and stop. For the velocity, we are giving a constant velocity of 50. You can give less or you can give more. And for the arm position, we have made a state flow diagram. Okay, and I think uh, if any of the viewers are not familiar with state flow yet, uh, we do have a quick introduction to state flow, which is a way that you can create these flow diagrams to create uh, your programming logic. So if you're interested in that, feel free to uh, click on the link below and look at our intro to state flow. The state flow model we did is for conditioning. What condition? The arm position is at zero. When the button is pressed, it will go to the position of 900 ticks. You can change the position. You can give whatever position you want. And another button is pressed, the down button. It goes to its down position again. So by this, we are actually uh, implementing the position control mode with the hold because it goes to that specific position and hold it. We saw that uh, the control modes and the braking modes, we implemented all for the robot arm. And we can implement all these modes for the robot motion as well. Okay, so we're going to stop talking about um, how to basically raise and lower yeah. the arms. And by uh, what do you mean by robot motion control? So it's like how you can actually move the robot with the wheels. So the movement of the robot. And here we'll be using actually the joystick to control the wheels of the robot. Okay. Here you can see with the joystick, I'm actually moving the robot in different velocity and in different positions. My joystick is working with the robot. Okay, so this will be like a driver control scenario in the VEX competition. Let's see the Simulink model. So this is a model for the robot movement with velocity control mode. So here we have the joystick, two joysticks that are controlling the two wheels. This is an arcade type motion control here. And we have the two motors, the right motor and the left motor. Go into the right motors and we see that the braking mode is coast because we want the movement of the robot. We don't want it to stop at, at any position. And the control mode is the velocity control mode. And it's the same for the left motor. The braking mode is coast and the control mode is velocity. These all uh, blocks are in your VEX V5 library. 
Sounds good. As we saw that for the robot motion, we use a velocity control mode. And now we'll see how we can implement the position control mode for it. So in this video, there is no input from me or any joystick is doing. The robot comes, turns at a position and then go back. Okay, so I think for, for those students participating in the VAX competition, this will be more of the equivalent of an autonomous mode routine. Yes. This is a Simulink model for the robot movement position. We have a state flow logic for that and we have two motors, the smart motors right and the left. Here as again, we have two inputs, the velocity and the position. And why? because the control mode is the position mode. The braking mode is brake because we want the robot to go to a specific position, stop and then rotate back. And it's same for the left motor. The braking mode is brake and the control mode is position. We are giving a velocity, uh, velocity of 50. You can give as much as you want. So let's see what is the logic that I'm putting. This is a state flow chart. The logic behind is for the moving forward, we give the absolute position right rotation two. And after three seconds, it will go stop and then turn around and then go backward after three seconds again. Okay, sounds great. And it sounds like in this particular case, Neha, uh, the braking mode of brake is a little bit more usable for the autonomous routine since we want it to be very accurate, right? But uh, the uh, coast mode came in really handy when you were driving with the remote control because it doesn't give you any quick jittery stops, right? Yeah. If you ever want a stop, so you can use either brake or hold. Okay. But if when you want full no stoppage, then you should use a coast okay. In the final, we'll talk about some takeaways that we did that we actually learned that the VEX EDR V5 smart motors have the velocity and the position as the control modes. Brake, hold, and coast are the braking modes of the smart motors. And these all modes can be applied with various different combination of control and brake modes for all the different robot movements. We have seen the arm, we have seen the robot motion, you can use it in claw or any other movement you want to include in your robot. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Neha. That, that was very good. Thank you for sharing those demonstrations with us. Uh, for everybody watching this video, if you have any questions for us or any comments on the videos that we're putting out, uh, please feel free to reach back to us. We have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash past competitions or send us an email at pastcompetitions at mathworks.com. Feel free to leave a comment in the video. And if you have not yet gotten a complimentary license, if you participate on one of the sponsored student competitions, make sure to check out the links below. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you.